that uh, Bruce Almighty get, I don't know if you've seen the film, but he, God meets him, he said, okay, if you can, you think you can do it better, you be yeah. God for a couple of days. <laughs> so Bruce saw, which is Jim Carrey playing the character, is God. Yeah. And then he hears all these prayers coming into his head, like, please God, give me this, give me that, give me this. And he's going, how do I cope with all these prayers? Everybody's wanting everything all the time. So he comes up with this master scheme. Okay, I'm going to do it via email. Yeah. And all the in and his inbox is just going, you know, increasing with all these prayers coming in. So he said, okay, I'm just going to answer yes, yes to all, hit all, reply all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because he just didn't want to hear it anymore. And then the next morning in the streets, there's bedlam because people have got their beautiful car and got the relationship, but everything's falling apart, the house of court cards are falling down instantly because they thought they, what they wanted wasn't bringing them happiness and he just saw how much... Everybody in the town won the lotto, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. that's it. The whole town won the first division in the yeah. world, and they got $7 dollars. Yeah, they only got a dollar each or something. Yeah. So they got, then when they thought they got what they needed to make them happy, they weren't happy and that was a beautiful scene. It would be beautiful to be on your list, I think, that scene because only the Holy Spirit knows what we need. And I think of in the Song of Prayer pamphlet, which is one of the, um, the, you know, the extra editions after the course, and in true prayer is something I'm dealing with, I think, now is I, in true prayer, I take Jesus' hand or whoever my, to me, is significant, and I walk to God, and I sit down and kneel down in front of Him on, and put all my wishes on the altar in front of Him. And say, if it be thy will, I will trust what you give me, but in the meantime, I hand them over to you, because I know, only you know what's right for me. Let's <coughs> What I hear from you, what I hear you say, is about the difference between being up there and being down here. I think what it is that you're looking at <coughs> is you still believe that there is an I, an I that, that needs or wants or has the desire to have things. And then there's a level above that where there is no I, and you've essentially surrendered that to God. And at that point, there's actually nothing that you want, but God gives you everything. Mm -hmm. And that's perhaps the difference in what you're seeing, the two levels. Mm -hmm. And at some stage, each one of us are called to move beyond the I, this, this identity that has needs or believes it has needs or would like to have other options that it has currently. And it still perhaps prays to God to the other one that has already surrendered that ego or that I and said, this is not my life, this is your life. I'm living your life through this body. So whatever your will is for it and however you may use me most and allow that space to, to take place. And that's what I see as the difference between where you're comparing yourself and where David is. There is no I. See, there is no I sitting there, that's the thing. There is only Holy Spirit personified, moving, living and breathing through that, that being that we, we call, have labeled as David. And that's the difference. So, yes, it is up there, but it is only because it, that eye has surrendered itself to the will of God. And for most of us, we get to do so. And, and we have a choice to make. And, and every one of us, at some point in our lives, will get to the point where we really come to the realization that there is no alternative, there's nowhere to go, and we do have to, if we want to fulfill our option on this planet, and you wouldn't be sitting here, not one of you would be sitting here if you were not moving to that space, where you will, or we will, all surrender our will totally to God, and become one with that, and allow that to work through us, no matter what it chooses, whether it, we, it has a sweep in the streets, or whether it has us flying jumbos to Hong Kong or London. It's completely irrelevant. Can I please share something which um, <coughs> was burning inside of me this morning and I feel that it's, it's um, linked at the core to what Les is asking about on everybody's behalf as far as what we want being manifest and also what Raj is talking about going from 
there to there being no I, and David's mentioned it a few times. And, and like you were saying this morning about we all get in our face exactly what we need. So for the last nine years for me, I've had immense time alone in silence and really ploughing through the layers using art and creativity, as you know, and also then being blessed with relationship three years ago, so adding to that, so it seems that's really all there's been for me. There's no distraction of work, other people, anything else. There's the alignments and there's relationships, so that's constant. So I surrendered my will nine years ago. I said, okay, show me, show me what you want me to do. So I've gone th through years and created work that's been constantly inspired, but there's a deep, <laughs> deep level and I've gone through a lot of it of just absolute black self-hatred and you know I've kind of wondered about other people's experience but it's you know I've had no nothing to project it on so um, and I know I haven't there's I've been distracting myself in the last couple of years because I've been so terrified of, of being uh, caught in a place where I've been a few times where I didn't think I was going to come out of it so um, so I, I don't know whether that, that feels to me to be, as we talk about going from here and just dropping the ego, yeah, well, great, but in my reality, there's been a very real experience of that blackness and, and self-hatred, massive. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, hopefully that hasn't distracted, but it somehow relates to, because my other experience and deep seeings and awareness is that, that the fullness, just as, your example of everything being provided, that is so for all of us, but in different ways, in the ways that um, bring us mo the most joy, whether it be the, the perfect house or whatever it is, it's actually there within us. And, and I feel for me, it's, it's, it manifests to a certain point and you can't go any further until that, that you know, unworthiness and everything's really gone for, for, the, for all of it. To be manifest or for the wholeness to yeah I think it, it all integrates together in fact in a, a book that just came together recently called Waking Through Course of Miracles I, I put this uh, this a chart of concentric circles that kind of describe how the core is your prayer or your desire then the ring of belief is right outside of it and then uh, right outside is the ring of thoughts or cognition and emotion and then perception so, what we're talking about here, when, we, when Les brings this question, and really all the questions deal with, with uh, the perceived world. You know, that's, that's what you're dealing with on a daily basis, and so that's where you have to start working. And like you were saying, you know, if you use tools like art and relationship and those things in your perceived world to, to take this immense journey inward, and it's uncovered a lot of blackness and, and hatred, you know, kind of taking a lid off of of stuff that was really buried down there. And in terms of prayer, or the song of prayer that Frank was bringing up, that basically, uh, even when we pray for specifics, when we ask for things in our lives that we feel would be very helpful, when we say we put them on the altar or whatever, we always are really asking for, deeper in our mind, we're asking for an experience. And what seems to be the specifics is what we believe will bring us that experience. So, like Les, you were bringing up with Tina, this idea of like a house with a white picket fence, there's something, there's a feeling underneath that image. And, or flying a jumbo jet, or, or whatever, or a soulmate, or uh, uh, whatever the image seems to be, there's a feeling that we're going for. And then, that's where the belief system kicks in. And the belief systems, you know, the ego has quite a lot of variation, so what, kind of like the example with, uh, with Bruce Almighty, you know, uh, or with people all getting a yes, but everybody had different versions of what they wanted in form to bring them the experience that they wanted. So it is important to go deeper inward.